Imagine you have a weekly budget of $20 and you are spending it on just two things, coffee and sandwiches. Coffee costs $2 per cup and a sandwich costs $4 each. Since you have a limited budget and sandwiches are twice as expensive as coffee, you will need to make some choices. Let's figure out a few combinations of coffee and sandwiches you could buy. For example, if you buy zero sandwich, you can spend all your money on coffee and therefore buy 10 cups of coffee. If you buy two sandwiches, you have $12 left and can buy six cups of coffee. If you buy four sandwiches, you spend $16 and now can buy only two cups of coffee and so on. Let's plot these combinations on a graph. Each point represents a bundle you could buy with your given budget. The straight line connecting these points is your budget line. It shows all the combinations you can buy with your $20. The budget line represents all affordable combinations of two goods, clearly distinguishing between what is within your budget and what lies beyond it. Maybe you wish you could buy three cups of coffee, which is here, three cups of coffee and eight sandwiches. Eight sandwiches is here or one cup of coffee and five sandwiches. But you cannot as these two combinations are out of your budget. These cost more than $20. But the combinations like 3 cups of coffee and 2 sandwiches or 1 cup of coffee and 1 sandwich, a combination below the budget line in the green area are affordable and you could buy them if you want. We can express this budget constraint in the form of an equation algebraically like this. In our example of coffee and sandwiches, the budget equation would be PC into C plus PS into S is equal to M, where PC stands for price of coffee, capital C stands for quantity of coffee, PS stands for price of sandwich, capital S stands for quantity of sandwich and M stands for total budget. We already know that the slope of a curve is calculated as a change in variable on the vertical or y-axis divided by change in variable on the horizontal axis. In our example, the slope would be the number of coffees that the consumer is willing to sacrifice for an additional sandwich. So this means that the slope is minus 2, meaning for every one sandwich, you give up two coffees. This reflects the opportunity cost or the marginal rate of exchange. This minus sign also has relevance as this is reflecting that the slope is negative and in order to gain one sandwich, one more sandwich, you have to let go some coffee. Another interesting thing about budget lines is that they represent the price ratio. Now you might wonder why. The price ratio specifically represents the trade-off between the affordability of two goods in question. In our example, to afford one more sandwich, we need to give up two coffees as the sandwich costs twice as much as a coffee. First, let us define what is price ratio. Price ratio is the price of the good on the horizontal or x-axis divided by the price of the good on the vertical or y-axis, which would be minus PS over PC in our example. This would be price of sandwiches divided by the price of coffee, which is minus 2. Now, aren't you surprised? Did you notice something different? Intuitively, we always look at the slope as rise over run. And we might think that the slope should have been actually minus PC upon PS. But in the case of budget lines, it is run over rise something you must pay attention to. This is something you need to be careful about while preparing for your exams. Pay attention to the axis. They show quantities of goods and not the price. And the slope of the budget line reflects the price ratio, but it's represented as run over rise to show the opportunity cost of choosing between two goods. 
we can also mathematically derive that slope is equal to minus PS upon PC from our original budget equation. Now, if you are interested in going deeper and understand how we do that, you must check out the last part of this video where we will derive this step by step. Now, before we wind up the topic of budget lines, let's understand the two main properties of budget line. It has a negative slope. That is, it slopes downwards as more of one good can be bought by decreasing some units of the other good. The second property is that the slope of the budget line is represented by a constant price ratio, which we discussed in our last few slides, which is minus PS upon PC. Since it is constant throughout, therefore this is always a straight line. In summary, on the budget line, remember, each point shows a possible combination of coffees and sandwiches within your budget and the slope helps you to decide how to spend your money based on prices and your preferences. In my next video, we will understand how do budget lines shift, when do they rotate and what does it all mean for your choices. Now let's go to the mathematical derivation of the price ratio from our budget equation in case you want to dive deeper. We already know how we calculate slope. Slope is change in y-axis divided by change in x-axis. So in our case, it would be slope is C2 minus C1, which is cups of coffee, change in coffee divided by change in sandwiches. Now, budget equation is represented by PC into C plus PS into S is equal to M. We can also represent the same equation in this form, where I have kept C on the left hand side and we take rest of the values to the right hand side. Calculating for C, we get this. What does that mean? that whatever money is left after purchasing sandwiches divided by price of coffee would give you number of coffees. We can also express it as C2 equals M minus PS into S2 over PC or C1 would be equal to M minus PS into S1 over PC. Now, if we substitute these values of C2 and C1 in our slope formula here, Okay, this is what we are going to get. So instead of C2, we replace this value, which is M minus PS into S2 over PC minus M minus PS into S1 over PC and the whole thing divided by S2 minus S1. Here we are multiplying the numerator and the denominator by PC. And when we do that, we can easily cancel out this PC and this PC, this PC and this PC and what we are left with is this equation. After this, we are going to open the brackets and we get M minus PS into S2 minus M plus PS into S1 and the denominator remains the same. Now here we can easily cancel M plus M and minus M and we are left with this. Here we can take the common factor PS out so we are left with S2 minus S1 in the numerator as well. Then we can easily cancel this and your final answer left is slope of the price ratios. Slope of the budget line as price ratios. In case you want to really understand this, I would highly recommend you take a pen and paper and do it once on your own. It's not that difficult. I hope that this video was helpful. Stay tuned as we explore shifts and rotations in budget lines in my next video. Don't miss it. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. See you there. Bye.